Hello, this is David Bianco. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to be taking a little bit of an audio excursion into maybe something controversial in the music world. Well, it's something that I've thought about many, many, many times over all the years. And recently there's been a slew of discussions about this topic because of new releases of old material and box sets and all these kind of things. So let's dive into the whole idea of what's really better, mono or some form of multi-channel. That's coming up next here on the Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion. So some might call this the old elephant in the room. I don't know. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion lately about these situations related to mono, versus stereo, and I'm even going to throw in multi-channel above and beyond that. What sounds best? What sounds the most natural? What's right? What's wrong? Well, I don't, first of all, all of these things, of course, are opinions. Mine are just opinions as well. So that's an important thing to remember. Our taste is different and what we like is different for a variety of reasons. But I really, really got to thinking about this as the Revolver box came out and I started to listen to the remix and started to listen to the, the mono that was in the box sets. And I started to really reflect on the history of sound. I mean, we have to go back and remember that mono, of course, was what was out there first because everything was a singular channel. And back in the day, you would go into people's homes and they would have these consoles or these uh, record players set up. And everything that came out of there, of course, was monaural. It was one channel. So no matter where you were in the room, of course, you pretty much heard the same thing because it was all coming out of one speaker or multiple speakers, but the same information was coming out. Uh, then as things progressed and we got into stereo in the 60s, there was a lot of crudely done stereo. Um, we had two and four track capabilities, so there wasn't a lot of channels to uh, mix a different instruments and people. And again, we have a lot of examples, Beatles I have here, you know, some of the more classic, um, you know, voices to one channel and, and uh, music to the other channel, very crude. Uh, but it was more a function of what the technology was at that time. But as you went into people's homes and you now went from a console into maybe something where there were separates, where you stood in the room had a lot to do with what you heard uh, and what you were biased toward hearing because maybe you were closer to one channel where all the voices were or you were close to another channel where there was only instruments. I'm sure occasionally we may even have gone into stores or things like this and you may hear that they're only feeding one of the stereo channels and it sounds like something is totally missing. So, so all of these things are part and parcel of the evolution of how we came from mono to stereo. Now remember, back in the day, in the 50s and the 60s, we had transistor radios. That was a big listening device, and there was a, even a little plug-in that could go into one ear that had a wire, uh, and, and that was kind of popular for a while. But it all was one channel. So things were basically suited for that. They were mixed for that. They were thought of heavily as being delivered in that format. And so therefore, that is why things were basically mixed in a way that would sound best on AM radio. So remembering that and then reflecting on it, we realized that the introduction of stereo, which is two channel, basically created a bit of a quandary. Uh, how do we separate these sounds? How do we make it sound natural? Uh, well, the truth of the matter is we have two ears and most of us can hear through both of those ears. And so we do naturally hear certain things from one direction or the other. If a person is standing to your right, you're going to hear them more pronounced on your right side than your left. And depending 
whether they're in front of you, on the side of you, or toward the back of you, you're going to get this perception of their location relative to that side. If they're standing straight in front of you, then of course, it's center channel, it's dead center, just like mono would be, just like stereo would be if it's mic dead center. Now, when you go to a concert, and we're going to talk about here maybe like a, a, a concert hall or an orchestra, and the orchestra is typically spread out across the stage right to stage left, you then, the sounds will come at you from a variety of locations. I don't know about you, but I've never been to a concert where everybody was lined up straight in front of each other and all of the sound came directly straight at me. Of course, there's also the acoustics of the hall that create an aura and these kind of stereophonic images, of course. But the point is, we hear in multi-channel, we hear in stereo, we hear with our two ears. We even have depth perception if we start to talk about uh, multi-channel, four-channel, 5.1, 7.1, 9.2, whatever the numbers are. We do have this perception and capability. Now, one may not like the way that gets subdivided up into pieces so that uh, it sounds like there's just too much going on. So again, these are in fact differences that impact each of us somewhat differently. But to me, when I start to think about mono, and there has been just so much focus on how much better mono sounds, well, it partly depends on the way the stereo was mixed and put together and what the technology allowed for that to be at the time. And certainly some of these hard pans right and left or even some of the things where they try to play tricks with it because stereo was getting popular in the 60s. So they wanted to show it off how something could move. And that's very unnatural. That's not usually the way it is. Although singers on a stage do in fact move, we hear them through a microphone that puts them at a certain position. So even that can be very unnatural. So that's the nature of how someone engineers it based on maybe what the artist wants or maybe the artist doesn't care and the, the engineer has some free reign or the producer has some free reign to do that because there's always the old stories about the Beatles and George Martin worked hard on the mono mix and then they literally would um, leave the studio and have other people involved in the stereo and they really didn't care about it. So um, that probably was more a product of the lack of maturity of that at the time. And again, stereo was an up and coming thing. So for me as a listener, um, well done stereo, nothing that is really oddly pushed one way or the other to where it's isolated is much more pleasing to my ear and natural. I think that uh, some mono can get layered so thickly that you obviously can't hear certain pieces very well because there's just so much going on. And that separation creates a an opening that allows that to be opened up and allows for you to create a distinction in your perception of what you're listening to. So I was listening earlier to some Rolling Stones music, reflecting on the fact that there's this mono box set coming out. And honestly, my opinion is, I don't know that the Rolling Stones were ever recorded that well, in my opinion. Um, to me, uh, the recordings that they have in place are uh, a little bit garbled. They're not very distinct. Um, they're not very clean. Uh, and so when they are in mono, they're kind of just heaped on each other. And it's, it's a sound that, of course, in an AM radio coming out of that, it sounds perfectly fine. But when you, for me, I have l less of a positive experience with it. As they uh, evolved and some of their songs started to move into stereo, they sounded richer to me. Ruby Tuesday is a really good example to me. 
it sounds, uh, you know, although there are some aspects of it, like the bass seems a little um, distorted almost uh, in, in that song, even in stereo. But at least it opens it up and really has a pleasing sound to me being in, in a stereo mode. So these things are all personal preferences, but I do think that it's interesting to me that there is such a high degree of uh, kind of bias in the vinyl community, it seems, toward mono these days. Uh, for me, it's not nearly, it's more nostalgic for me that I hear it that way because I can reflect back on certain sounds being more predominant because they came across the airwaves that way or they came across the 45 RPM that I had that way. Uh, but when I want to hear more of the information of what's what's on the record, what's on the recording, a decently done stereo for me is actually one that, that gives me a little more definition and a little more clarity. And then when I get into multi-channel, uh, what it does for me is it brings out some things that distinctly I can't even really pull out easily in stereo. So it gives uh, even a greater definition to certain aspects of it. But I will admit when you listen in that mode, your brain is doing a lot more processing. Uh, and to me, it starts to become a bit um, like it's it's hard work to listen to the music because there's so much going on. And when those things happen, uh, it becomes a bit fatiguing. And so for me, it helps establish an understanding, just like it would if I was able to go back to the original 8-track or 16-track or however many tracks there are and listen distinctly to the different sounds. I kind of know they're there and I kind of hear them separately so that when I hear it in, in stereo, or potentially even in mono, now I maybe my mind can draw that out a little more because I've heard it distinctly and, and, I, and I kind of have a recognition pattern that occurs there because of it. So it's just really an interesting aspect of listening to music. Again, I don't think there's always a right and a wrong when it comes to this whatsoever. Um, we have to recognize that a lot of this music was in fact made and built for mono at the time. And a lot of what happened subsequently was evolutionary and experimental and limited by the technology. So you can see that evolve as you go which is kind of interesting because you can kind of see who really started to be those that took it seriously and did it well and, and those who basically uh, left it in gimmick mode, so to speak. So it, it is an interesting reflection back on how things progressed. So for now, that's my topic. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the bell there. The black one gets you the actual notifications. Liking with a thumbs up is always appreciated in comments. What do you think? What are your thoughts on stereo versus mono or multi-channel? What are your preferences? What are your thoughts? I'd love to see them in the comments. So for now, thanks for watching again on this audio excursion at Safe and Sound, Texas. Take care, everybody.